Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Guys, stay stay with me. Shalawama. And in today's class, we're talking about the man whose number is 666. Mm, interesting. We did a class not too long ago talking about the mark of the beast. And whenever we do classes on the mark of the beast, people tend to always want to refer back to Nero mm. and the time before the second temple was burned back there in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. I believe the reason why they're doing this is because they want to discount the book of Revelation, basically saying that it's a history book and that we don't have to worry about any of the prophecies in that book. Mm -hmm. Because, of course, the book was written by John, who was imprisoned by the Romans after Jerusalem had been burned. So if he was actually talking about Nero, who was back in 66 or 64, he would have just been writing a book about history. Nothing in it would be about futuristic stuff. Right. But anyway, we know that's not true. But when we get comments like this, I like to go in and look at them anyway, because it's a way of sharpening our sword. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like, you know, having a sparring dummy, you know, that you could just practice your weapons on. And so that's what I did. I decided to go in and look to see if Nero somehow has the gematria of 666. Okay. This would make Nero the Antichrist. And what I found was is that the gematria don't really mean anything. Okay, so you're going to explain what the word gematria means, right? Okay, when we come back and we look at a website called myjewishlearning.com, we'll let you read what it says. Okay. Gematria is a numerological system by which Hebrew letters correspond to numbers. This system developed by practitioners of Kabbalah. Jewish mysticism. Right. That tells me that they don't want you to know it. By adding that Jewish mysticism part in there? Right. Yeah, we did a class not too long ago how anything spiritual, they tend to stick that label onto it. The thing about it, when is the last time we saw this word Kabbalah being used? You remember? Mm, I do not. The last time you and I talked about the word Kabbalah was when we were looking at the 72 names of God. Right. Mm-hmm. And what we found over at Kabbalah72.net was that they just made up those names. Yeah, you went and looked up a few of them and totally uh, discredited it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they're not even they're not even words at all. Like this one here, which we would call Y Y Y or Yod Yod Yod, mm -hmm. it's not even in the Bible anywhere. And that got me to looking close at where this came from and. They're just mixing up letters that they find in a few verses there in Exodus chapter 14. Mm -hmm. And so it really don't mean anything at all. Right. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is that the gematria is totally wrong as well. Well, turns out that is the case. Looking over here at how they come up with the gematria, this is at commons.wikimedia.org. You see how it's like they're picking the letters at random and assigning them numbers. When we start off here at the beginning letters, the Aleph, the Bet, and the Gimel, they correspond with the Greek letters Alpha, Beta, and Gamma, or A, B, and G. And they all have the numbers 1, 2, and 3. Mm. But then notice how it works when we get down to the end, where over here you have the Hebrew letter Reish, or what we would call the R. And how it corresponds to the S or the Sigma over here in Greek. Mm. So they're mixing them up. You see how you have the T sound here and they're giving it the number 300. But then when you look over in the Hebrew, it actually has the number 400. Right. Mm -hmm. And when we look at the most common or the most familiar gematria for the 666, we see Vicarious Philadelphia, which means the replacement of Christ. Mm -hmm. This is what the Pope wears on his head, saying right. that he is the replacement of the Son of God. I remember you telling me that. Mm -hmm. Well, they add their gematria to it and see how they come up with 666. So what it seems as if they're doing is they're pulling letters out with the purpose of making it 666. Forcing opposed, it. Yeah, forcing it to be 666, opposed to actually um, 
it being that they're assigning numbers trying to get it there. Yeah. See how right here you have the D equals 500. Mm -hmm. Well, that's how they're getting the 501. They assign I with the number one and E with a number of zero. So it's like they're picking them at random to come up with a 501 there. And they did the same thing with the rest of them. V over here they have is five. C somehow they've assigned the letter 100. And R right here they've assigned zero to it. All forcing it to be 666. Right. Mm -hmm. So this Kabbalistic Gematria thing means nothing at all. all it's right. just random stuff. Just like what they were doing over here with these 72 names. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. making up stuff. That's kind of deceptive. Um, well, it's very deceptive. So then I started thinking on my own. Who, who, who is this 666 guy ignoring the Kabbalistic Gematria and looking at how the Hebrew has numbers assigned to the letters on its own and just using those mm -hmm. and punching in people's names? Trying to see what I come up with. Right. Now, the first name, of course, I tried was Joe Biden. Okay. Only because he's our current president. Right. Now, when you look in here at the Hebrew letters, there is no J whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So his name would have been more like Yosef. Mm -hmm. But I already had this handy where I went in and looked up Joseph from the Old Testament and looked at his Hebrew letters of his name. Right. When you add them up, you get 10... For Yod, six for Wa, sixty for Semit, and eighty for Pew or the P sound. That gives you like a hundred and fifty-six. Mm -hmm. Biden is not in the Old Testament, as far as I know, but those would be just three letters: Beth, Daleth, and Non, or None. So that would be a total of fifty-six. Mm -hmm. So we have fifty-six and one fifty-six which equals nowhere close to 666. Right. So his name didn't work. Mm -hmm. So the next name I tried was Obama. Oh, my goodness. I don't want Obama to be the 666. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> well, we have to stick to the facts, and that's important to the understanding here. That's what the scripture means when it says you follow the lamb no matter where he leads. Right. Wherever the truth goes, you have to you have to go with it. So right. if it turns out to be the Obama, it turns out to be Obama. Right. If it turns out to be your parent, it turns out to be your parent. You have to go right. We have to go with the truth. Mm -hmm. But when we look at Barack Obama in the Hebrew, it would be the Beth. And we'll let you write these down. Okay. So it would be the Beth, which mm -hmm. is two. Mm -hmm. It would be the Resh, which is 200. Okay. And it would be the Quaff, or making the K sound, that's another 100. Mm -hmm. Then for Obama, there's another Beth in there, would be two. Mm -hmm. A M or a Mem, which would be 40. Okay. The A-N, which would be 70. So what does that equal so far? We've got 302 for Barack and 112 for Obama. So how many is, how much is that? 414. And so if we come in, we add the Hussein in there, that's going to give us a 5, okay. a 60, mm -hmm. and a 50. Okay. So that's about 529 total. But the thing is, it's not going to work out to 666. Right. So I did the next guy. Okay. And that is? Trump. Uh-oh. I don't know if I want Trump to be it either. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm kind of So scared. we start off with Tav is 400. Okay. Then we go to Resh, which is 200. How much is that? That's 600. 600. 600. <laughs> And then we go with the M, which is 40. Okay. That's 640. Looking back at their gematria, we can assign a 6 for the number U. Okay. So that's 646. T, so T R U M gives us 646. Mm -hmm. 
which is getting mighty close. Mm, getting a little too close. But then when you put the P in there, it blows it all out and ends up to be more like 726. Because, yeah, because the P is 80, right? P is 80. 726. So then after playing around with these numbers for a while and, you know, just trying different people according to, you know, the Hebrew, ignoring the Kabbalistic gematria and just looking at the Hebrew letters, I went through a lot of the presidents and none of them came out. Well, I was kind of scared about Trump because, you know, the last Trump, his name is Trump. Uh, and, you know, just the persona of who he is, you automatically think. He might be the guy. By being president number 44? Mm, all of that. Yeah. Of course, they label him as 45, but there was a president who was elected two different times, and so they count him twice. Right. Well, so President Trump is actually number 44, and I personally believe he'll be reelected. But no matter how I feel about it, his name doesn't come out to be 666, just like Biden doesn't and just like Trump doesn't. Obama. Or just like Obama doesn't. Mm -hmm. And so he's just not there. Mm -hmm. No matter how you feel about it, neither one of them name will match up according to the Hebrew gematria. Okay. Of course, with the Kabbalistic, you can kind of do whatever you want and make any name fit. Right. Mm -hmm. So then after wasting a lot of time, I decided to come back to the scripture <laughs> <laughs> and try to get some hints on who this guy actually is. Okay. All right, so we hear about him in Revelation 13. So we're going to jump down through here and pull out a few verses okay. that will help us to understand who this guy is. Mm -hmm. And I believe by the end of this video, everybody's going to be convinced who he actually is. Mm, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, let's, let's start here at verse 1, and we'll look at some of these verses real quickly. Okay. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Now, we've already talked about this name of blasphemy here. This is how this guy has written on his forehead that he's the replacement for the Messiah. Mm -hmm. You remember, that's why they labeled the Messiah as blasphemous, because he said that he was the son of God. Right. So him being the son of God or God himself was labeled blasphemous for saying that he was the son of God, mm -hmm. which, you know, we all are actually the sons of the Most High. Right. Here you have this dude that's actually put on his hat that he is the replacement. Mm -hmm. That's what vicar means is replacement. Right. Mm. That's kind of bold. Yeah. So that's what it's talking about when it says blasphemous there, that he has blasphemy on his head. See where it says vicar of Christ is mm -hmm. replacement of Christ. But then notice this other part where it, is talking about having seven heads and ten horns. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, we learn in the book of Daniel that a beast is talking about a government. Right. It's mm -hmm. kind of given like a scary name. People think of a wild animal. But anytime we see the word beast in the book of Revelation, and, and most of the time throughout the Bible, it's simply talking about a government. Mm -hmm. But this one, this particular government is talking about the fourth beast that Daniel prophesied about saying that he has seven heads and ten horns. And we easily know these as the ten federated nations. Right. Mm -hmm. The Anglo-Saxons, the Franks, the Alamans, the Burgundians, the Visigoths, Survey, Vandals, Heruli, Bavarians, and Ostrogoths. All you have to do is look at a chart of the timeline history of the world, and you can actually see these kingdoms come out. There you have the first beast over here with the Greeks, the next beast with the Persians, the Roman Empire was the third beast, and then you have this fourth beast that you see comes out of the Roman Empire. There's your Visigoths, there's your Bulgarians, and if you look closely here you can find all ten of these different groups that comes out of the Roman Empire. This is the fourth beast. Then if we read verse 2, and the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. What this is talking about is how this fourth beast will have similarities to the other beasts. Mm -hmm. You see a picture from Clarence Larkin over here where it's describing the fourth beast, and he has the feet of a bear, 
this bear was part of the Medo-Persian Empire. Mm -hmm. He has the mouth of the lion talking about the Babylonian Empire. And he's like a leopard. He's like the Grecian Empire. Okay. And you, you can look at those and see what exactly it's talking about. Like, for instance, how the Grecian war machine, how they, you know, outfitted their armies. And, you know, they, that's the way these armies of the fourth beast are today. Mm. And that's why he's like the leopard. But he has the feet of the bear. The Persians were into conquering other nations and different stuff like that. So it's kind of like he's marching through. He has the feet. And then he has the mouth of the lion which they was all about education and you know training people into the babylonian culture and doing stuff like that so you have all of those in this fourth beast here okay but then notice that it says and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority right this is the fourth beast and you know how they have so much authority now is because of who they're getting their power from Okay. And, you know, you could do research on that, how they have meetings with this guy. And anyway, look at verse three. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed and all the world wondered after the beast. This right here, what I'm understanding from my online research is that this is pointing to the fall of the Roman Empire as far as the Pope is concerned. Mm hmm. Um, back there with the um, Protestant revolt and how they pretty much uh, almost annihilated the papal system, but it recovered. Right. But we're gonna, we'll come back to that. Okay. Then look at verse four. And they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast, saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? So what this is talking about is all of these federated nations. Mm -hmm. The the UN, United Nations, is pretty much made up of these people now. Mm -hmm. And who would dare go against the United Nations? Right. Um, that's what they're saying. Who, who, I guess I just said it, who would dare make war with the beast? All right, look at verse 5. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months. But what he's saying there in verse five is that this original beast was given a, a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and power was given unto him to continue 42 months. And if we look at verse five in relationship to verse three, what this is saying is, is that this beast that John saw rising up out of the sea was in power for 42 months. Mm, okay. That's going to be one of the biggest clues that tells us who this 666 mm. guy is. Mm. But we're going to come back to that. Let's go on to verse 6. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. Yeah. So this right here, this beast, this, this guy who was given 42 months, that's who he's talking about here, how he opened his mouth to blaspheme against God, his name and his tabernacle. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's giving us hints on who who this individual is. Right. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. OK, so to ruin the suspense here is talking about Constantine. Constantine. This this right here. Yeah. <laughs> this, Isn't he dead? <laughs> he is dead. OK. But like we said, we follow the truth wherever it leads. Okay. But that's what this is talking about here when it's saying, give it unto him to make war with the saints. Mm, okay. And we know what he did. Well, the trickery he pulled on those uh, followers of the father. Absolutely. What we learn is that back in 312, Constantine decided that he was the head of the church. He saw some vision, he claims, that he saw a vision that told him that he was supposed to be the head of the Christian church. Mm -hmm. Whereas before he had been killing the Christians, mm -hmm. slaughtering the saints even the day before, decided in 312 that he was now the head over them. Mm -hmm. And since he outlawed the slaughtering of the saints, a lot of them banded behind him and actually allowed him to become the head of the church. Right. OK. But we learn over here at World's Last Chance, one of the very first thing he did was outlawed the biblical calendar, did away with Passover 
and force people to keep Easter instead. Mm. Okay. And so that's part of what it's talking about over here where it says he was able to make war with the saints and overcome them Mm -hmm. by taking away their calendar from them. He was actually able to have power over them and he continued to actually um, kill them throughout history. He just didn't kill the ones who were supporting him and following the calendar. Anybody who actually tried to stick with the biblical calendar, he had them killed. Right. Right. Even through the crusades and everything. Mm. Hmm. Okay. So this is the guy that was talking about up here in verse five that was given the 42 months. Okay. So does that line up? It does line up, but I think you're getting a little bit ahead of us. So let's Mm -hmm. go on here. Okay. Let's look at verse eight. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names were not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So anybody whose name was not written in the book of life is worshiping this first beast now. Okay. Or at least at the time, Mm -hmm. everybody whose name was not written in the book of life was worshiping the first beast, the government system. In other words, they became Catholics. Mm, They start following the Catholics doctrine, even up to keeping Easter and the other holidays, holidays of the beast. Those are the holidays of the beast that he instituted and those whose names are not written in the book of life are following even to the day they're still following those Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but anyway let's let's go on still getting a little ahead of ourselves. if any man have an ear let him hear no what this is saying if 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 you really want to know the truth you listen there's there's many people who don't want to know the truth you know as soon as i said that 666 wasn't donald trump a lot of people clicked off the video right you know they're gonna go find somebody else that's gonna tell them what they want to hear or obama obama whoever right. it is <laughs> whoever joe biden are. whatever it is they're gonna find somebody mm-hmm. that's gonna go along with what they want to hear and so that's what this was referring to if you want to know the truth you need to listen very carefully mm-hmm. because it tells us exactly who this 666 guy is mm. and we just gotta want to know the truth it's not who this guy is up here Because we ain't got to him yet. Look down here in verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Yeah, revenge is real. That's what this is talking about. He who who persecuted the church, the ones under Constantine that did all of this harm in the past. These are the same people now that's going to catch the brunt force of this apocalypse. Mm. You know, that's why I say you better pay attention. That's why in other parts of the book, it says you better separate yourself or you're going to get caught up in the same place that these guys are doing. Mm -hmm. You know, we're in a time of repentance. We need to get on it. But anyway, look at verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb and he spoke as a dragon. So here's another beast. This is the second one. This is the second one that, that we're talking about here in verse 13. He's a part of the fourth beast overall but he's another one that's coming out of the the first beast that we're talking about Mm -hmm. because if you remember up here it says that this beast up here was only given 42 months right back up here in verse Mm 5 so after these 42 months are over that this first guy was given now down here in verse 11 you got another beast that's coming after this guy so this uh second beast is coming after Constantine, but coming out of his teachings? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, we look at verse 12. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So yeah. So this, this second guy is actually pushing everybody to worship the first beast. Mm-hmm. He's, you know, Jake basically is drawing your attention to him. Mm-hmm. Look at verse 13. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image of the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and caused that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand 
or in their foreheads. So this guy, this second individual is doing all of this. Yeah. But then notice right here that it's actually starting to get into this 666 part. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Read verse 17. We're going to start breaking down who this guy is. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So this is the second beast here that's putting this mark on people. The right. first beast didn't put the mark on people. Constantine. Constantine didn't put mark on people. It's the second beast that's actually putting the mark on the people. Okay. All right. Now read the last verse. I'm kind of scared. <laughs> 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that has understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. And his number is 600, three score and six. Now see, this is why it's important to do our own studies. You know, even after watching this video, people will go and they'll start fact checking what I'm saying and coming up with their own information. Mm -hmm. While there's others who's just going to, you know, take what they hear and go along. Mm -hmm. Well, those people who are just following and regurgitating information that they're hearing, they're lacking understanding mm -hmm. and they're not going to find out who this guy is. Okay. But when they start digging in to find out who this guy is on their own, praying, of course, yeah, of course, and all knowledge has to come from our father. Right. Then we start to learn exactly who this guy is that he's talking about here who is this second beast who was okay. the second guy okay all right so let's figure it out like we said the first clue is up here where it's talking about how the first beast only had 42 months constantine only had 42 months and when we look to find out where else in the bible did we hear about this 42 months we see it over in chapter 11 where in verse 2 it's talking about how they were trampled the holy city for 42 months mm -hmm. And then in verse 3, we see that this 42 months corresponds with 1,260 days. Right. And we've heard this. A lot of people have put this together that the 42 months, the 1,260 days, and the three and a half years are all pointing to the same or similar time period. Mm -hmm. So that's what I decided to do. Praise our Father in heaven. Hallowed be his name. I decided to look at where we end up when we start off with Constantine in 312 and go ahead 42 months or 1,260 days. Mm -hmm. And what we end up in is the year 1572. Okay. So the second beast would have started in the year 1572. His reign. He, his reign would have started in 1572. Constantine started in 312. And then 42 months later, we end up in 1572. And who do we find in 1572? Pope Gregory the 13th. Okay. Pope Gregory the 13th started his reign on May the 13th in the year 1572. Mm. Okay. So here is the head of your next B system. And you say, well, what's important about Pope Gregory? Right. Mm -hmm. He's the guy that invented the Gregorian calendar. Mm. Mm, I'm starting to wonder now. <laughs> Hell, he's the one who started hits. the Gregorian calendar. <laughs> okay. And of course, we learned in our last class that the mark of our father is adherence to the biblical calendar and his holy days. Well, it was this Pope Gregory the 13th that instituted the Gregorian, Gregorian calendar. Mm-hmm. Hmm. The thing about Pope Gregory, by instituting the calendars, he's the one who put the mark on the people. See, Constantine didn't create a calendar. Right. Before the Gregorian calendar, there was the Julian calendar. Mm -hmm. The Julian calendar goes all the way back to 46 BC. So Constantine didn't have anything to do with the calendar at all, except outlawing the biblical calendar. Right. And making Easter a religious holiday. Mm-hmm. It was Pope Gregory who created a whole nother calendar system. Okay. So he's the one who actually put the mark on the people. That makes sense. That makes sense. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to add it up in my head, but that makes sense. Um, so what about this right hand thing? Well, the right hand, when it talks about the mark, like it says in the, in the Old Testament, when it comes to the mark of our father, it's also on the right hand on on a forehead. What that means is it's talking about your work activities, how you do stuff. Mm -hmm. And when it's talking about your forehead, it's talking about how you live and how you think. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's on your head and that's why it's on your hand. Mm -hmm. how, what you're thinking about and what you're doing. 
The same is true with this opposite calendar here. It has you working on the Sabbath day, breaking the Sabbath day, and it has you keeping pagan feast days and breaking the law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why didn't Why didn't I know that? When the hand and the head. Yeah. It's because you know we're thinking that it's going to be something visible that we see. Uh, a, a tattoo or something like that, but mm -hmm. it definitely makes sense when you say that the the thoughts that we're having as far as the head and the work that we're doing as far as the hands. The hands, but I realize you know that's not going to get us there because everybody's waiting to see this six 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 thing. Right. Mm -hmm. So let's show you how that works. But first, we have to understand that Gregory is an English name. Mm, okay. In Latin, his name was Gregorius. <laughs> Gregorian calendar and so let's look at how that name actually ends up being 666 okay you can see how over here I was working on Constantine trying to see if he was the guy 666 his numbers came close to just like Obama's and Trump's did but it just didn't add up but when you look at Pope Gregory understanding how the Hebrew works we can figure out what his name is in Hebrew Gematria. Okay. Or real Gematria. Now, first we have to understand that there are no vowels in the Hebrew. Right. So all of these vowel sounds are going to get a zero. Okay? Right? Because that's just the way the Hebrew works. What about the I? We'll come back to the I in a minute because it's not really a vowel sound. It does actually have a number here. Okay. So we'll start with Gregorius first. You have the G, the R, followed by a G and a R. The Gimel is three. The Resh is 200. You see, those four letters gives us 406. Okay. The I would be the Yod. I and Y is actually the same thing. They're just like there's no J mm -hmm. in the Hebrew, there's no I in the Hebrew either. Okay. Both the J and the I are really the Yod. Okay. That's why some names are like Israel and some names are like Joseph. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I, but, I always wondered that, but okay. <laughs> but now we get a 10 there. Then the S, the S sound is this to sets, which gives us a 90. That gives us a total of 506 for Gregorius. Okay. Now all we have is the Pope. Right. And that is... Two letters? Two letters, P and P, or Pew and Pew, both would give us the 80. So that gives us 666. Mm. So, it says that he would cause, so by him bringing in the Gregorian calendar, he caused the people to take the mark. By instituting that calendar, by publicizing that calendar, he's made everybody rich, poor, bond, and free mm. to take on the mark of the beast. <laughs> You're taking on the mark of the beast by following the Gregorian calendar. Wow. He's the guy of 666, and his, his mark he's put on us, put on the world, by making people follow the Gregorian calendar. Wow. Wow. Because I'm gonna I gotta go read that again. <laughs> Cause that that's 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 crazy. So mm. So let's read it over again, knowing in, in this in context, knowing that it is I guess starting with um with his, with him being the, the second beast. Right there, verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke as a dragon. Now, this could be pointing to the split between the Catholics and the Protestants. Hmm. I mean, there, there was a split between the two Roman empires, too, where you have the Eastern Rome or Western Rome or something like that. But it's also the Protestant church, too. Because the Protestant church follows the Gregorian system, even follows the pagan holidays on the Gregorian system. Mm -hmm. So even though they're, they, they have the two horns like a lamb, they actually are still talking about the Gregorian 
pagan holidays mm-hmm. and you know got people doing those like i say even down at the church they have christmas parties and easter's parties right. every mm-hmm. year mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and he exercised all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed the wound was when the protestants separated separated Mm -hmm. you know at first they thought that the roman empire was going to die because you know people identified them for all of the bad stuff that they had been teaching but through the catholic manipulation they was actually able to reconquer the world they was actually able to go in and um but they they call it the the counter-reformation where they was actually able to go in and turn the world back to Catholicism. And now they live again. Mm-hmm. Uh, even the even the Protestant Church is mm-hmm. under Protestant. Yeah. Under, yeah. Is, mm-hmm. is, is Catholic. You know, every just about everything about the Protestant Church is Catholic. Except, right, right. Yeah. That's true. Mm-hmm. You may not have. Well, I guess some of them even have the crucifixes down there, and mm-hmm. you know, so everything down there. And he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of man. This right here, I believe, is the Holy Spirit. How the Protestant church is able to bring that, what they say, feel like fire shut up in their bones, Mm -hmm. making people believe that they're actually being overcome by the Holy Spirit. Or maybe they are being overcome by the overtaken by the Holy Spirit when Mm -hmm. they have these moments or whatever, these Catholics, these Protestants are able to do this, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. convincing the world that, you know, that you got fire coming down from heaven. Mm -hmm, That's mm -hmm, the the quickening of the spirit. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by his sword and did live. Yeah. So you have him doing all of these miracles here. And then you have the image of the beast as the image of the first Catholic church. And, you know, those the people are expected to worship that that first Catholic church Mm -hmm. is still still Mm -hmm. engaged to it. Now, like I said, you do have a huge statue of Constantine that, you know, they have over there in the Basilica. Now, is that what they're talking about? It could be talking to an actual physical structure, Mm -hmm. um, but it could just be talking about. The fact that, you know, we are still mimicking or following the image of the Catholic Church. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Yeah, so I believe this is through your television Mm. and how they're able to, you know, have these government figures on the television basically ordering the death or even the spiritual death of people who will not obey the Catholic Church. Mm-hmm. Have people being ostracized all over the world who will still follow the sacred calendar. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. This is everybody. Poor people doing Christmas, rich people doing Christmas, they all doing Easter. You know, you got the, the wealthy kids snatching candy, just like you got the poor kids snatching candy out there on Halloween. Mm-hmm. Everybody together, rich, poor, bond, free, even people in prisons. They, they even take um, turkeys and stuff down there to the prisons so the prisoners can, can partake in the feast days. <laughs> <laughs> they do. They have Christmas in in, in, oh, in really? prison. Yeah, people be sending them gifts and everything. Mm, okay, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark right. or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So people who will not follow the the calendar, they they can't work. I mean, you you can't hold down a job because your Sabbath days are switching. You know, from each month to month, your kids can't really go to school. How are you gonna tell your your principal down at your school that your kid is gonna miss? One day out of every week. Right. Because it's of his Sabbath day. And he's not going to come to school on days when they have holidays. Right. When they have Christmas parties and all of that, your kid is not coming to school that day. It's not going to work because, you know, now you and you as a parent are about to get in trouble and your kid's about to, you know, I think they come to the, you know, it's come to the point now that they'll even take your kids away from you yeah, so and stuff like that. It's and so forcing that's what, you to mo- to worship the calendar. Yeah, person. and that's you know we was having this discussion. That's one of the problems that I have with, you know, um, a lot of the the groups of you know Israelites that they say that we're walking in the truth, but yet it's still 
they're still under the the calendar of the Sabbath day, so the Saturday the Saturday days, you know. And I was telling you that it has to be because of convenience, and like you were saying, it's because of their jobs. Yeah, you yeah. know, they're 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 still celebrating the weekends, mm -hmm. and so that's kind of hypocritical um, to be still celebrating Saturday as your Sabbath when. It's, you're still doing the same thing as the world doing. Yeah. yeah. But that's what it's saying up there. If they decided that they was going to follow the sacred calendar, then they're going to have to start keeping the sacred Sabbath days. So now they're about to lose their job. And exactly. so you have the choice. You either lose your job or follow the beast calendar. <laughs> and so that's what they're doing. They're following the beast calendar because they want to be able to buy and sell. That's what it means. You won't be able to buy or sell without taking on that mark. Mm, 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 mm. He that has an ear, let him hear. Yeah, you got to want to know it. Yep. Right. Yeah. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Yep. And there you go. When you look at his name, Pope Gregorius, that's what you end up with. You end up with 666. Pope Gregorius is 66 in the Hebrew Gematria. Not, you know, it ain't going to work on that Kabbalistic Gematria stuff. You know, it just don't work. But when you look at just the Hebrew and the numbers assigned to those letters, that's what you come up with. So let's lay this out in plain, plain English so everybody can understand. Okay. So what we're saying is that. Pope Gregory the 13th instituted the Gregorian calendar. You yeah. know, that's that's. You what do the did, research, yeah. yeah, you find that out. And so the Gregorian calendar uh, fits the description of all the things with the buy and sell, rich and poor, um, the mark. So are we saying that the Gregorian calendar is the 666? Or the no, Pope Gregory, Gregory is the man whose number is 666. Six, six. His name equals 666. Six, six. The calendar is the beast's calendar. That's the calendar of the beast. And when you follow the calendar mm. of the beast, you get the mark of the beast. Just like when you follow the calendar of our father, you get the mark of our father by keeping his feast days. Mm. When you follow the calendar of the beast, you get the mark of the beast. By following this, those feast days, which include birthdays, anniversaries, all of that stuff on the calendar. You know, uh, you always, Sunday worship, uh, Sundays, mm -hmm. Sabbath days, everything. You know, you always said that it was about the calendar. It's all about Even the calendar. From the beginning, when we got on this walk, you always said that it was about the calendar. And, you know, me with my, you know, I would say ignorant, uneducated self, uh, can plainly see that that makes sense. It's all about the so, calendar. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So see what people be. adhere to it and That's see what the people say in the comments. <laughs> yeah. You guys let us know what y'all think down in the comment section. We'll, we'll probably end up doing this video a little later as we do more research on it. We still got some stuff to work out. What is the image um, and different stuff we have to work out. But y'all let us know what y'all think down in the comment section. And we'll see you there. Shalom.